Hey everybody, so today we're just going to do a very brief tutorial on the jit.gl.model object that we looked at in class next week, and then I'm going to give you some homework to do over the weekend. Uh, so as you, uh, as we saw in class, we went to turbosquid.com. Uh, it's one of the websites where you can buy and download free 3D models. Uh, another one is CG Trader. Um, and we saw that Max likes to import .dae and .obj files. Uh, then they'll, they'll come right into Max. Note that .max files are for a different piece of software called Max. Um, they, they have nothing to do with the Max that we're working with. They're for 3D Studio Max. Um, so, so .obj and .dae are the files that we like. So we'll download a .dae file here. and save it to the class folder, and then we can find that file on the hard drive and just drag it right into the project, and there we have a 3D model that we can work with. And uh, you know, as we've looked at before, this file is just referenced in our project. If we open up our project folder here, notice that uh, it's not inside our project folder until we say consolidate, and then it's moved, it's actually copied, a copy of the file is placed into the project folder. So you want to remember to consolidate before you move a project from one computer to another. Um, and, and speaking of, uh, we had talked a little bit about how we're going to share projects. Um, I think that the, the best way to share projects is to compress them and then share them uh, using Google Drive. So. When you have a project, and this can be a little bit different if you're working on PC at home, but for Mac, uh, you can take any folder, such as your project folder, click it, and compress it. Compress Tutorial 6 project, and it will turn it into a .zip file. And that .zip file, um, you can share. Uh, it's going to be smaller than the original file and you can share that on Google Drive, and some students have already done that, and that'll be an efficient way for us to, to share proje entire projects. Uh, all right, so um, let's create a new file in our project. We'll call it uh, Model Explorer that creates a, a file within our project, and it also creates that file within our project folder. And we're going to be making a jit.world. and a jit.gl.model. And um, uh, turn on our world. And then <clears throat> we can drag and drop our model file onto the jit.gl.model, and it will import into our world. And that's a handy and quick way to bring a model in. But unfortunately, it won't stay there when we close the file and reopen it. And also, unfortunately, jit.gl.model does not have an at file. Oh, it does have an at file. Oh, well, that's handy. I didn't think it had that. Uh, that might be a Max 8 thing. If you're still using Max 7, it may not have an at file for loading files in. But uh, but with this, you can do jit.gl.model, at file, low poly underscore tree underscore sample dot DAE. And that will automatically, oh, very nice. New feature in Max 8. Uh, that will very nicely load our a file each time this model is created. Turn on some lighting as well. And then once our model is in, uh, it's going to respond in all the same ways that a, that a grid shape does. So we can alter its rotation, its position, its scaling. And if you're not using Atruis yet, uh, you know, I highly recommend Atruis because they're, they're a very easy way to get at all of the various 
parameters uh, of of an object. Um, so uh, our our model becomes very flexible, and of course we can also connect our model up to a jit.gl dot multiple and make lots of them. Jit.noise, uh, as we've talked about, is a, is a, is a totally random uh, number generator. It uh, it doesn't give us structured randomness the way that jit.bfg does. It just gives us static, if you will. Uh, so jit.noise three make let's make a hundred uh, trees. We'll make a hundred trees in a ten by ten grid, uh, just so we can see what this jit.noise is outputting. If you want to see what's coming out, you can always use a jit.p window and we'll look at these numbers as oh, this needs to be float 32 yeah so a hundred random numbers organized in 10 rows and 10 columns and we're seeing the numbers represented as colors uh, they're just values between 0 and 1 that we're seeing as red green and blue uh, but we're going to use them actually as positions so we can drop that into a jit dot gen and as we've seen before when we're dealing with normalized values uh, between 0 and 1 such as jit.noise puts out we do a standard minus 0 0.5 which uh, which converts this into a signed value from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5 and then multiply it by the area that we want to spread the objects over say 10 meters and Don't know why I went up to 24 points that time. And oh, also need some scaling here. So we'll just uh, give these some scale like three tenths of a meter. And there we go. There's a uh, hundred, a hundred trees. You can use the jit.gl.handle to sort of take a look at what we've created here without needing to create a camera and move that around. Jit.gl.handle is dangerous though um, because the jit.gl.handle will always reset when you close and open your patch. So it's much better to, when you're creating a scene, manipulate the camera because the handle is just a, it's just a convenience tool for looking uh, at, a, at, a, at a different angle than the camera is showing us. Um, so you always want to hit reset because that is uh, this, this, this view that we're seeing right here with the handle reset is what is going um, what is going to revert to when we close and reopen our patch. And there's no way to save that handle value, n nor would you want to. You, you want to manipulate the camera. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, some I'm not going to go into too, too much detail about it, but just a, a quick look at how to use the matrix output. So at matrix output 1 is going to pass our model out of the object as a matrix. And so these colors that we see here are actually the points um, of the object. And then we can reconstitute them using a jit.gl.mesh that has to be in draw mode triangles. And we can see our object come back to life, except where it's not all there. Um, why is that? Let's turn on some lighting, enable. Um, well, it's because uh, when we when we use the matrix output mode, uh, the object's going to be split up into several groups if it was created in multiple groups. And this particular object was created in two groups, one for the top of the tree and one for the bottom of the tree. So we have another attribute called draw group. And draw group one is the bottom of the tree. And draw group two is the top of the tree. And I can draw these to two separate jit.gl.meshes, like so. 
and now our tree is whole again, but we're drawing the two draw groups separately. And uh, if we want to combine those, I'll just show you one quick new object, which is jit.concat, which takes two matrices and sticks them together. We can concatenate these into a single matrix and thereby draw the whole tree with just one jit.gl.mesh. Um, but it's sometimes it's nice to have each of the draw groups rendering to its own mesh so that you can, for instance, manipulate the color. Um, we'll just do uh, some sort of dark. This is the roots, so we'll just do some sort of brown. That's not a brown. That's a kind of a reddish brown. Let's darken that up a little bit. There we go. It's a nice woody brown. So I'm, I'm creating this color in the jit.gen. And, um, and similarly, uh, I can create a color for the top. here. And so that allows me to handle the two parts of the object separately. And if I want to uh, put these into a multiple, I actually now need two jit.gl.multiples as well. I could feed them with the same gen, but I need a multiple bound to the to the tops and a multiple bound to the roots. And now I can create multiples of my processed geometry. And that's as far as I'm going to go. Um, there's, of course, many more things you can do, but I want to get on to the homework assignment, which I will give you in a separate video.